Justice League Dark is the latest addition to the DC animated universe, and it plunges deep inside the world of magic. We've got the filmmakers here to tell us what tricks the movie has up its sleeve. So what is the premise of Justice League Dark? Uh, the premise of Justice League Dark is all the occult characters in the DC universe team up to face a foe that the Justice League can't handle on its own. What do you think it is about these characters in particular and this grouping that makes fans that excited? Well, I think a lot of these characters haven't appeared in any of our movies up until now, and um, they're always fun characters that, you know, even if they don't have their own books, whenever they show up in other people's books, they bring a lot of excitement and energy to those books and those characters. So um, to see them all together and bouncing off each other, and um, I think it's a no-brainer for a good story. What are some of the comic book references that fans can look for? Oh my god, there's a lot of in there. Uh, we have the House of Mystery, we've got like, uh, you know, it's funny, we even have characters f like from, uh, you know, the, like we have Richie from Constantine's Universe, we have uh, just tons of kind of like little Easter eggs, I like to throw Easter eggs in there, so yeah. for the fans who like read the comics, you'll, you'll notice a few things that we kind of did nods to. So talk to me about getting these characters right, capturing the look for each of the characters of the Justice League Dark. You look at something like Justice League Dark and you have all these freaks and monsters, which is generally what the villains are, yeah. but these are the good guys. So if you look at them as a group, their silhouettes are really varied and different and you get, you get to play a little bit more, you can yeah. push the shapes more. And they look more dynamic as a group as a result of that. So that's, that's really the, the meat of the design, the fun of the design for me yeah. is that, that aspect. You mentioned Swamp Thing being a part of this. What role is Swamp Thing going to play? Uh, he's like the big badass. Um, he's like a force of nature um, that they go to to kind of find out where um, where the root of all these problems are coming from. And, Pun intended. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and he either helps them or he doesn't. But we kind of play him up as this kind of enigmatic kind of uh, being. Um, but. Uh, but when you know push comes to shove, we see you get to see Swamp Thing like do some pretty awesome yes. stuff. Yeah, yeah. What were some of the comic books or stories that you pulled from, or were you just kind of like we're gonna do our own thing? It's pretty much an original. We we um, we pulled all their backstories, so everyone's history is represented in the movie, and um, you know we kind of just came up with our own premise and went with that. I mean, it, it was um, it's not quite as metaphysical as uh, the actual comic book was. Okay. Um, it's a little more of a straight adventure with a lot of occult, -ish, you know, a lot of magic thrown in and occult uh, battles and things like that. But um, it's pretty much it's pretty straightforward. Was there one character in particular that was a little bit harder for you to get to? No. You're like, no, I got to play and I was on board. <laughs> yeah. So who was the most fun to come up with? That? Uh, I think Etrigan the demon is a lot of fun. I mean, he's really cool. He speaks in rhyme. First yeah. of all, he's always got flows. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, Which makes it's him like, terrifying yeah. when you're like, you know, he's a demon, he's a, he flows, He's like good. a medieval rapper, you know? <laughs> but uh, he's, he's cool because, you know, he, he's he's a monster, but he's heroic and virtuous and noble. Yeah. You know, and, um, but, you know, he, so he defies the, you know, his surface look. Um, but yeah, he's a lot of fun because he's, yeah, he looks dangerous, but he's really, he's just a tremendous amount of fun to draw. What is the moment or thing you're most excited for fans to see? You know what? Um, we made it like a horror film. So this is yeah. the, one of the first, actually this is one of the first animated ones that we did that we, we, we tried to have like scares and it's, it's uh, we tried to keep it like a horror film kind yeah. of feel and tone. Even the music, we try to keep it like in that, in that kind of, kind of genre. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so, but it's definitely not for kids. So don't have your kids watch it, but I can't wait. it's pretty I can't hardcore. Wait. Hearing about all these characters, obviously, normally when there's a big bad, it's like you bring in the Justice League. Yes. How much fun was it for you saying, okay, this is going to be a bigger bad that we need the Justice League dark to take this? You know, what's interesting is that like, you know, when you look at the regular lineup of the Justice League, like it's all gods, you know, Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman, you know, yeah. Flash. But what I wanted to kind of get across in this movie was that even with those guys, they would have failed fighting against you know these supernatural elements, yeah. and that, and that there's a reason why the dark team is, is around because they handle the kind of supernatural side. Yeah. And uh, and throughout when you when you watch the movie, you realize okay, if Batman and Superman and, and Wonder Woman were here, yeah, they wouldn't been able to handle this. Yeah. Um, and that's what we try to do. That's just a taste of what you can expect from Justice League Dark. And if you want some classic Justice League action, you can keep up with their latest comic book saga in issue 10 this week. See you guys tomorrow.